In any of the rooms you create, the fifth panel will be called Views. If you click on it, you'll get a slew of options. Let's ignore the first few checkboxes and just go down to the section that says View 0, View 1, View 2, and so on. You'll notice that it goes all the way to View 7. This means that each room has the potential to have 8 views. Let's click on View 0, so now it's highlighted. And let's move back up to the top. The first checkbox says enable the use of views. If you want your room to use a view, which is like a camera, you have to check this box. Otherwise, your game will try to show the entirety of your room, and you probably don't want that. The next checkbox says clear background with window color. In the backgrounds tab, if you don't have draw background color selected, and then in your view tabs, you don't have clear background with window color selected, any transparency in your room will be black, but that's not actually the color black. It's where all your graphics are being drawn to the screen. So if you don't have either of them selected, the game will constantly update the graphics on top of itself and on top of itself, and you get this weird psychedelic effect, and it's totally not what you want. So either you have to have draw background color selected in backgrounds, or you have to have clear background with window color. Or you could just make sure that your game is fully drawn. You have a full background across your room size. Then you don't need to draw any colors, which is good because drawing a window color does take up a little bit of resources. Anyway, enough about clear background with window color. Since we have view zero selected, we can scroll down to where it says visible when room starts. If this is not checked, even though we've enabled the use of views in this room, if we start our game, we won't have a view. We'd have to initiate it in code. You might want to do this, it just depends on the effect you're looking for in the game. Most of the time though, you'll probably want that checked. That means when the room starts, your view, or camera, will already be positioned exactly where you want it. But let's talk about positioning the camera. The next section is View in Room. You have an X and Y field, and a Width and Height field. The X and Y value determine where the top left pixel of your view will lie in your room, or at least where it will lie at the beginning of your room, because you can make views follow objects. The width and height determine how big this view will be, or perhaps how small. Usually you want your view to be smaller than your room size. Let's use a platform game as an example. If you think of the Mario games, Mario runs along a gigantic room that stretches very far to the right yet you're only allowed to see a portion of it at a time. This is because the view is centered on Mario and only shows so many pixels around Mario, which would be the width and height of your view. So you can see for the purposes of this, I've set my width to 320 and my height to 240. The next section is called Port on Screen. This is the size of the actual window that will appear on the computer when someone plays your game. Typically, you'd want your view in room and your port on screen to be the same size. But sometimes, you might want to change it to change the scale of your game. Let me explain. Let's say I use the view 320 and 240. I could change the port on screen to 640 by 480. This is double my view. So although I'm only looking at 320 pixels by 240 pixels, when I go to launch the game, the 320 by 240 will fill a window that is 640 by 480, ostensibly doubling the size of each pixel, because it is twice the size of the view. If you are scaling your game, you'd usually want your port on screen to be some sort of multiple of the view in room, so you want to times those values by 2 or 4. It just keeps your pixels nice and crisp without stretching or skewing them. You could type in any value, as seen here, but see how the room is stretched all over the place? We wouldn't want that. Moving on, the next box is Object Following. If you don't want a static view, which for the purposes of a platform game, or really any game, you might not want it to be static. So you get a drop-down list of all the objects in your game. Here I've selected my player object. So this camera, or view, will follow my player around the screen. It'll always try to center him, and it'll always leave a 320 by 240 border around him. The next few text fields are horizontal border, vertical border, horizontal speed, and vertical speed. This determines how far away this object has to be from the edge of your screen before the camera will move. 
So let's say we don't want the camera to lag at all. We want the camera to follow our character perfectly every time. Well, as long as our H bore and our V bore equal or exceed the W and H of our view in room fields, the camera will always stay centered on our character. We could, however, change the H border to something like 64 pixels. This means that our character can move around freely without the camera following him until he reaches 64 pixels away from the left or right border. Then the camera will push and move at his speed. Wait, did I say his speed? Well, we haven't really talked about speed. For H speed and V speed, I have them set to negative one. This means that the game will ignore the speed here and adopt the speed of the object it's following. So for this reason, yes, the camera would follow our character at our character's speed. Now, you might not want that depending on the game you're making, so this is a good opportunity to type in any other value. If you type in zero, the view will not move ever, which is probably not what you were going for if you're using object following. So try to use a positive number, one through whatever. My character moves at a speed of six. So if I choose any value between one and six, the camera will lag and try to keep up with our character, as seen here. The unfortunate part is our character can run off the screen, so we don't want that. Now there are ways in code to create sort of an interpolation effect and have the camera slowly follow and speed up and lock to position, things like that. But we'll get into that later when we talk about views in code. For now, it's probably best to leave it as negative one, which just negates this speed value and adopts the speed value of the object the view is following. So I hope you have an understanding of one view, because we're going to go into more than one view now. If we go back up to our views scroll down list and select view one, we can now initiate another view. So let's click visible when room starts. Now our room has two views. For this, I'll give it the same view in room, which is the same camera size. So 320 by 240. I'll give it the same port on screen, 320 by 240, just so it doesn't stretch our graphics. However, the X value of our second port, we're going to increase from zero to 320. The reason for this is, if you remember, view zero goes from pixel zero to pixel 320. What do you think will happen if we start this view at 320 and then add our width of 320, which means it goes to 640? If you guessed we'd get split screen, you'd be right. Here's what it looks like. Now you can see we have our first view on the left side going from pixel zero to 320. And then our second view starts at 320 and then increases in width by 320 to 640. This gives us a screen size of 640 by 240 and gives us two separate views. Of course, you have up to eight views to use. So you could actually do eight screens split all over the place. Views are very powerful, and there are definitely more ways to use them than just following an object or creating split screens. For instance, just as a little side note, if we increase the X value in the port on screen section for that second view by, I don't know, let's say four pixels. So now it's 324, and we run our game. There is now a four pixel gap between view zero and view one. This gives us a nice little border. Although this does make our screen size 644 now instead of 640, so that could be weird. It just depends on the kind of game you're making. Of course, there's a lot more to learn about views. And of course, we're going to go into it when we learn view in code. But for now, just understanding the menu, I hope you can see how powerful views are and how pretty much you're going to use them in every game.